Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today we're going to be looking at F ping, the letter F ping. I uh, did this video back in 2012, but uh, I've been asked to uh, kind of update it a bit with a couple of extra little tips and tricks. So let's uh, start with the basics here. If you go to quackleflap, quackleflap.com, I'm not even going to I'm, you know what? I'm guessing that's how it is. <laughs> Who knows? I'm, I'm sure that's pretty close. So you go to quackleflap.com, and when you uh, scroll to the bottom here, you will actually see a reference to other tools, and you'll see fping right there. And when you go to fping, you basically uh, download. There's a download link, a zip file. And uh, for those of you who know me very well, I love portable apps. This is a portable app. So you just unzip it and off you go. So what I'm going to do now is flash to the ominous command prompt. Dun, dun, dun. Cue the ominous music. So of course, if you just type F thing, enter, there's a list of all the options. I'm not going to go through them all. I'm just going to go through a couple of them and explain why I do them or like them. So here's the first one. This is a pretty cool little trick you can do. If I do F ping and I'll ping this remote address and dash uh, uppercase S, don't know why I got stuck there, uppercase S, and we're going to have a range for the data in the payload. So I'm going to try to make this packet bigger. And dash F means don't fragment the packet because a ping packet can get chopped up by default. So uh, what we'll do is, you know what, let me just squish guy this guy down a bit. There you go. You can actually see what's going on. So you can see he's pinging it, and uh, that dash F is going to prevent that ping packet from getting uh, broken up or fragmented if it traverses a router, which, which it is right now. So you get to the point where the packet won't go anymore, and then you get these error messages. So at this point, Control-C will stop this, and I can see that if I have 1,172 bytes of payload, um, then it works. Anything greater than that is going to fail. Um, you know what? That's good enough. So this is good when you have those routers with uh, VPN connections or if you have something between you and the other guy that's chopping up your packets. It's a great way to find out at what point does the packet make it through or fail. Let's move on to the next one. Good old ping sweep. So ping sweep, sometimes I need to figure out uh, what's on the subnet. And I don't want to download a program that's going to install a bunch of software just to do a, a ping sweep or, a, a, I guess, pinging sequential numbers for me. This is a great way to do it. So it's just fping dash lowercase g, the starting and the ending IP address. And there you go. You'll know exactly which ones are there and which ones are not. The other one that's pretty cool is a timestamp option. Now, if I was to just do it like this right now, you'll see the date and the time and say, well, big deal. This is a little more important if you were to put it to a log, which is coming up next. But the neat thing about this, because sometimes I mess things up, and you can see right here is dash uppercase D and, I mean, sorry, uppercase T. I can't even say it right. T and then D. Well, that's time and that's date. Uh, it doesn't matter the order. So as you can see, it's date and time. So you really can't mess it up, which is kind of nice. So the next thing you probably want to do is write to some kind of log. The reason why I like this uh, dash capital L space and whatever the name is, I like that because it actually shows you on the screen as it's pinging as well as writing to this text file. Whereas the old way of doing this would be to do a um, greater than and then text dot text, whatever you want to call it. But the problem is there's nothing going on. You think it's frozen, you don't know what's going on. Whereas the dash L feature actually shows you uh, the status for every single ping. On that same note, if you just wanted to F ping something and just see the results. You don't need to see every single ping reply on the screen. This dash O will do that. So it, it kind of pauses for, you know, in this case, four packets worth. Um, if you had more packets, if you it pinged at 100 packets, then this would take a lot longer to pop up on the screen. This is really helpful if you were to use that log feature and you don't need to see every single ping result and you just want to capture the actual. Uh, final statistics dash lowercase o is that option then there's my favorite reason for using fping and that's the ability to put some text into the packet so if i just press enter it's pinging like it normally would in this case you'll see the payload uh, is going to be slightly different than what it is by default because i'm using that text and that little 
text string will be in the packet. So if I was to capture it in Wireshark, you would see that there. Now, why is that important? We call this bookmarking in the field, which means I'm going to capture a bunch of packets, and every once in a while I want to send a ping with a note in it. So later on in Wireshark, I could search for that text and see exactly where that is in the packet. Fantastic tip for streaming media stuff, things that don't stop yapping while you're trying to capture. The next one, if you're going to ping something with a name, let's use google.com for example, you'll see reply from Google, Google, Google. Well, if your server has uh, load balancing or, or some kind of load sharing, you might want to know what IP came back. And by doing that dash capital A, you'll actually see the address, not the name. So that's nice to know as well. So the last thing you can do is if, if you really wanted to, we'll uh, string a whole bunch of these options together. I'll, I'll show you one and then we'll, we'll put a whole bunch of them on the screen. So this one is going to ping this IP address, my default router. It's going to use a 300 byte packet, uh, 10 milliseconds between each packet, because Microsoft does one second. This can go to milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, 100 packets, and then dash O is just the, the statistics. So as you notice, that came up pretty quick for 100 packets. So let's do a whole bunch more. So you'll see uh, there's the dot one again. 54 is a webcam out on Wi-Fi here. And you can see the um, averages are going to change, obviously, because this guy's on Wi-Fi and this is on a wire, which is nice to know. And again, it keeps giving you the statistics as it keeps going through all the different tests, which is kind of neat. And that's it, folks. So hope that helps. If you uh, want to see more of this stuff, this is what we do in our classes. And I'm going to have a class, three-day class, in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, coming up in September. So I'll leave some notes in there in case you want to attend. Have a good day. Bye for now.